Hello, this is John from MyBurnoutGames.com, and today I'm here to continue playing Afterburner for the Sega Master System. This is the second episode of my Let's Play for this game. Uh, I don't think I will beat it. I did some further reading on it after the first episode. There are no checkpoints in it, like there are in uh, Afterburner for the Sega 32X. Uh, there are, however, continues. Uh, if you press the 1 and 2 button and hold up, or if you hold all three after you lose your life, you can continue from where you left off. I think you have two continues, however. That being said, there is a reported cheat code, or, you know, cheat code for the game, where if you press the pause button, which is on the console itself, the controller just has two buttons and the directional pad. If you press the pause button 100 times at the title screen, uh, you will have unlimited continues. I think the continues normally only work up through, like, stage 7 or 8. But, again, if you press pause a hundred times during the title screen, you have unlimited continues. So we're going to try that and see if that works. I tried it once before and it didn't work, but maybe I didn't get a hundred. Maybe I didn't press it a hundred times. Maybe I ran out of time. I don't know. So I'm going to just keep trying this. I've got to be pressing this a hundred times at the rate I'm going. Oh, that's gotta be getting close. I need like I need a second person here to keep count. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna hope that's good. We'll see if it is. Either way, I have up to two continues. So, getting back to it. See, this is July 9th. It's been a day or two since I've played this, or since my last video. Finished out the work week. It's Saturday, so I'm enjoying the weekend. And I'm enjoying playing Pokemon Go. Finally able to get that going. And what it is, you know, they're having server issues. It just came out a couple days ago. And it's, it seems like it's super popular. Like, my entire Facebook feed has just blown up. Twitter feed has just blown up. People playing it that I would never peg as someone being into Pokemon or playing it, or these people are playing it. Uh, but the issue, you know, stems from server overload, and specifically, it looks like server overload with the Pokemon Trainer Club. Uh, whenever you play the game, you have two options of signing in or two options of creating profiles. One is to sign in with the Pokemon Trainer Club, which I already had an account with, and every time I try and sign in, you know, I get the it just sits there forever. It doesn't progress second method of signing in is signing in with Google and that's the method that actually seems to work since that's you know I'm guessing using other company servers Google's in that case uh, but you sign in with Google I'm able to get in and I have an Android phone so I mean I'm already using Google my Google profile for a ton of other stuff but man I'm glad I didn't wait any longer to try and get signed in because I'm having a, so much fun with it Last night we went and saw Princess Mononoke at a Circle Cinema, Tulsa's kind of independent art house, independent film house, and that was a blast. I mean, I was I was surprised at how many people turned out. We went and saw Spirited Away a couple of weeks ago, and there was a lot of people there. Uh, movie theaters maybe half full, two thirds full. Uh, but whenever we went and saw Princess Mononoke last night, it was sold out, pretty much. It was gone. And I guess there was actually a second theater they had to put people in. So that's cool. But beforehand, we went to Utica Square, kind of an upscale shopping center here in Tulsa, midtown, and ran into a whole host of other people playing Pokemon Go. Just a whole, I think we ran into like four other groups of a person or couple people playing Pokemon Go independently, independent of each other, and Utah Square was a good place to play it because there were so many Pokestops. In the game, Pokestops are just kind of little landmarks, statues in this case, or statues and clocks around Utah Square, where whenever you visit them or whenever you're close enough to them, you can get items from Pokeballs primarily, revives, potions, that sort of stuff. And so we were all out here just roaming around the Utah Square at like 9 o'clock at night, 9.30 at night. Just going to all these statues, going to these clocks. 
and it was fun. Had a couple of good conversations with people, which uh, after after the terrible news that's been all over all over social media and just news in general this past week, it's really uplifting to be able to go out and interact with complete strangers in a positive way, have a good time. Oh man, I'm just biting the dust here. I think... Yeah, if you hold, I was, uh, among the other reading I was doing, it said, you know, if you hold up and right, or up and left, you'll get in a spot where for like the first third of the game, you can't be hit. I guess that's another cheat code. This is going to make for the most boring Let's Play, but at least I'll be able to get to see some of the later stages. So like I said, I... I think I truly won't beat this game. You know, I kept saying that with Afterburn on the Sega 32X, but again, that was a game where I was facing lots of difficulty, but at the same time, it was somewhat fun. It was challenging. I knew I could overcome the barriers, the obstacles in my way. This one, I don't know that I will. And not because I don't think I can overcome the obstacles and barriers, it's just I'm not having as much fun with this one as I was with the Sega 32X game. Okay, but we made it through the first handful of stages. We're on stage four. Just keep holding this, see if, yeah. Yeah, those missiles are just getting right, right next to me, but not close enough. Yeah, no matter what side they come from, I'm, I'm safe down here. I guess I can just hold the Vulcan, hold my Vulcan cannon fire button. But yeah, and after uh, after seeing Princess Mononoke last night, we got out at like 12.30. My phone had died in the theater. You know, trying to post to Facebook or just doing more Pokemon Go stuff around Circle Cinema, it died. So I had to let it charge a little bit on their way back home. Uh, whenever we got back home, I plugged it back in. And my friend, he stuck around for a little bit. And we played uh, Final Fantasy VI on the PlayStation, actually. I've been going through that, playing, the, playing it on the Vita. Uh, we played a little bit on the PS3 because Final Fantasy is 4, 5, and 6. The PlayStation ports have multiplayer options, so that's a fun way to play those games. We played a good chunk of Final Fantasy 5 that way. And I've I've started Final Fantasy 6, I don't know, this is my third or fourth time starting it up. Uh, and this time I'm going to beat it. Or this time I'm going to beat it. We had started a, a year or two ago and we got about about where I am now, about eight hours in, playing multiplayer. I think what I need to do is just focus on playing single player, which is what I did with five, and then every now and then play multiplayer with him. You know, I think maybe a third of that game we played multiplayer. But anyways, we, he stuck around for a little bit. Let our we let our phones charge, and then we went out for a late night walk around the neighborhood looking for Pokemon. We wound up walking three miles. I turned on Map My Run, the Map My Run app, just to track to see how far we actually went, and we were out there for like an hour walked uh, three miles, which this is at like two o'clock, three o'clock at night, so we're walking and it's like, I can't imagine what people were thinking. That's fine, there weren't a lot of people out, just a little bit of traffic. Not the best time of the season to do that. It's summertime here, of course, and was it pretty much mid-July, it's the ninth, it's mid-July nearly. And even at like 2 o'clock at night, whenever we were out, it felt like it was 90 degrees outside. It wasn't, it wasn't, I think it was probably in the 80s, but the humidity, we've had some, we had some rain yesterday. The humidity made it feel like it was probably 90. It was pretty nice because it was dark, didn't have the sun beating down, heating you up in that manner, but the humidity really just got to us after, after an hour walking around. Just feel real sweaty, feels like clothes are sticking to your skin as they brush up against you. Yeah, this is uh, quite the boring way to play this game, but it's effective, I guess. I should have done this from stage one and not have to burn a continue. Okay, so we're back over the land that is green. 
back over, I guess, presumably some forest land. At least in this, this manner of gameplay, you can kind of focus on the soundtrack, kind of listen to that. That's one of the things I saw that was often praised about this version of the game was the soundtrack. I don't know, it seems fine. I ought to get a book and just start reading while I'm doing this. Let's see. Maybe start surfing the internet. I don't know what I'll play next on the Master System. I've got Yeez. The Vanished Omens pulled out. Jenny's been playing the Yeez games on the PSP. She's not one for RPGs, but she's not one for turn-based RPGs. Uh, which is why the Yeez games is something she can get into. It's action-oriented. It's kind of like The Legend of Zelda, just with a lot more stats. Basically, uh, the mana games. And she's really digging those. So I was thinking, man, I ought to check out the first Yeez game. So that may be in the docket. Oh. Cannot avoid, cannot avoid, uh, this thing. Okay, and I know in reading that the only thing that damages this are my missiles. Now, am I gonna have to sit through all this stage again? No. So I've gotta go missile crazy here. Man, look at this frame rate. This is just terrible. Man, this is like borderline unplayable. Okay, I guess I got it. I don't know, I was just sitting there mashing the missile button, holding down the Vulcan. Just darting left and right. Okay. There's a little hang-on reference, super hang-on reference. And playing this makes me realize that Afterburner 2 is just basically Afterburner. It just seemed like the uh, same stage as almost. You know, different. I'm sure that wave design of enemies is different. More, I know there are more enemies, just looking through the manual for this. At least, well, I don't know if there are more enemies in the arcade version of Afterburner than there are in Afterburner for the Master System. But Afterburner 2 seems like it's just the same game. Yeah, this is a pretty grooving track. Another game I popped in recently for the Master System whenever I was doing my test the other day was Ghost House. It's the only card-based game I have for the platform. Uh, the Master System accepts two types of games, one being just normal cartridges, the other being little cards, kind of like little, almost like, I guess you'd call it like a credit card. It looks like a TurboGrafx card. I think TG-16 took cards, uh, as did the Master System. And it's the only one I have. They come in, you know, thinner cases. Oh, here, I've got it right here. I'll just pull it out. So here's just, it's normal size case, but very thin. Ghost House, the Sega card. So whenever you actually look at it. All right, got to another stage. We're at stage eight. Just a little card. There are the contacts on it. Okay, it looks like this method is still gonna work on this stage. and get this card put back in here. Just save that for after the video, I guess. And then, of course, the actual cartridges. Just normal cartridges. Again, put that up whenever I'm done with this video. Which I've been doing this method for about the last seven minutes, and it's still getting us... Still getting us through these stages. I don't think you can do this the entire game. I think this method kind of invalidates itself at some point. But I guess we'll see how far it will get us. I don't... Unless I did the... Unless I hit, you know, unless that 
cheat code where you hit pause 100 times during the title screen works and I hit pause 100 times, I have no more continues. If I had unlimited continues, we could just play through this entire game. This would be a really cheap way of doing it, but whatever. If it's in the game, it's in the game. One more stage in. Back over the sea, back over the ocean. One downside to doing it this method is if it eventually does become untenable, well, you haven't had enough practice, you know, shooting down ships, dodging missiles to be effective in these later stages. Not facing much resistance. really facing any resistance. No one's shooting missiles at me. I think this game has 18 stages. This was what, stage 9? So we're halfway through. Looks like we're going to make it to stage 10. Flight refuel. Okay, stage 10. Back over land, back over Greenland. Okay. Yeah, they're missing me. And Greenland is in the color, not the country. I don't think this game is set in Greenland. I guess while I'm doing this, take an extended look at the manual here. It does have some story information. That's the one thing I missed out with Afterburn on the Sega 32X, since I had, so I don't have the manual for it. Got the back of the box, and that's the extent of the knowledge I have on it. Outside of you know just reading a scan of the manual online. Let's see mission profile, the time, the present, location, board the aircraft carrier Sega Enterprise somewhere at sea. You're a Navy air captain with the fastest, meanest set of wings ever to hit the skies. You fly an F-14 Thundercat, the perfect mix of man and machine. You supply the skill, reflexes, and guts. Your Thundercat supplies Mach 2 plus speed, unlimited firepower, and state-of-the-art battle computer, and a state-of-the-art battle computer which targets your enemies. When it comes to flying the unfriendly skies, you're the one they call the Ace. See, the mission, codename Afterburner. The enemy has developed a strategy that will help them conquer the free world. This plan is so secret that it was divided into two parts and hidden in different parts of their country. The country is never named. But it is the enemy and they are trying to take over the free world. Hint, hint. Naval intelligence has discovered the locations and are ready to deliver them, but they need you to get the plans out. Stage 11. You must launch from the deck of the Sega Enterprise and battle your way to the two locations. This may get me through the entire game. We may see every stage here. Your flight pattern is already programmed into the battle computer. Your F-14 Thundercat has been armed with air-to-air -air guided missiles and a Vulcan 20mm cannon. Fuel tankers are in place to refuel you in the air if you make it that far. The enemy knows you are coming, and they are prepared. Only a pilot with your experience has any hopes of success. Enemy aircraft have been sighted on radar. It's time to scramble. Good luck. Fate of the war. free world depends on your success. See what else we got here. Learning to fly, just detailing what the buttons do, kind of how to maneuver the ship since I guess the directions are inverse. Make the F 14 Thundercat barrel roll. Let's see the object. The object of Afterburner is to complete 18 stages of aerial combat, meet the trucks at each landing field to obtain the plans, and return safely to the aircraft carrier Sega Enterprise. 
end of the game, you start Afterburner with three F-14 Thundercats. If your jet is hit by an enemy missile and explodes or falls to the ground, you lose that jet. Another will take its place so you can resume combat in the air. You get additional jets when your score reaches 5 million points and 15 million points. The game ends when you have lost all of your jets. These stages seem longer than in Afterburner 2. Maybe it's just because this is a more boring way of taking the game on. That time just seems to go slower. Stage 12, back over land. So he's starting the game, heads up display, weapon system. Vulcan cannon, air to air guided missiles, know the enemy, bonus stages. I guess refueling in the air is a bonus stage. When you reach a designated refueling site, a naval fuel tanker will wing in above you. If you dock by guiding the refueling pipe to your Vulcan cannon, gun sight with the D-pad, uh-oh, and pressing button 1 or 2, you will receive bonus points. Refueling takes 8 seconds. Failing to dock will result in the loss of bonus points, although you will still be able to find land. Okay, yeah. I cannot continue doing that. Stage 12. That is a viable method up through stage 12. Started moving to try and get out of its way too too late. Okay, and I am holding one and two and pressing up, and I must not have hit hundred hit the pause button a hundred times, or that method just does not work. Who knows? Well, I think that'll do it for this video. I'm not gonna continue playing this if I can't continue. And hey, I made it to stage twelve. That's more than halfway through the game. Uh, so, will it pause? Yeah, okay, yeah, so it pauses. I mean, my pause button does work. <laughs> well, anyways, this was John the Gamer from My Brain on... Or, this is John from MyBrainOnGames.com, also known as John the Gamer, I guess. Or if you're playing Pokemon Go, A.M. Kippers. Am Kippers. Uh, and this was my second video for Afterburner on the Sega Master System. I do appreciate you watching this, and hopefully you've watched the last one, and hopefully you'll stick around and watch the videos I continue to publish for the Sega Master System and other platforms. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.